I have always been an advocate of saying that always pray to one for right I've always said that make one deity your ishta deity and and just stick with that Having said that, I'm also the person who did a Kundalini camp, a Gayatri Sadhana camp, and who thought of uh, the Sadhana app, and where we have different temples, 10 different temples, and so on. So how do we marry the two? And how do we then figure out where do we stand and whom should we pray to if it matters who you pray to? Here's the thing, your Ishta is always going to be one person, one entity. So that I don't think you should change. But you can always do sadhana of any form that you so wish and you can do sadhana of multiple forms one after the other. Because something amazing happens. When you do different sadhanas, something mind-blowing happens. And that is, every time you connect with a different form, not only you solicit, but you imbibe in you a different form of energy. As they say, you become who you pray to. You become who you seek. You become the one you love. How you are as a person can easily be ascertained by the kind of people you love in your life. It can be easily figured out by whom you pray to and what sentiments you harbor for that form that you pray to. So you become the object of your inspiration, you become the object of your faith and you immediately start deriving energy from whom you pray to. Therefore, not just for balance, but for spiritual growth, it is perfectly okay to keep your Mool Mantra, main Isht Mantra as one, Isht Puja as one, but have the courage to experiment with different mantras, different sadhanas. In Greece, uh, maybe a couple of thousand years ago, there was a king called Theseus, and he was also a great philosopher. And one of the original thought experiments that came about was when he returned uh, to Athens and his ship was docked. And he had returned after a victory. So he returned victorious. Now they preserved that ship, like a wooden ship, the size of a big boat. They preserved that ship. Now in order to preserve that ship, what they realized uh, that some parts of it were rotting and every time they would discover it to preserve it they would take out uh, a rotting plank and plunk in a new one and nail it in now there came a time when eventually all the planks in the in that ship were replaced there was not even one plank that was the old plank that gave birth to the fundamental question. Is it the same ship? Or is it a different ship now? I mean, it's the same ship that's standing there, but nothing about it is the same anymore. And same thing happens when you undertake one sadhana after another, 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 another. You are the same body. You might, the person outside world may see you as the same body, but what actually happens is, each time you undertake a sadhana, a part of you has shifted. A part of you has changed. A part of you has been now replaced. It's now new. It's now different. And that is how transformation is not an aha moment. You may have an epiphany. Oh, I get it. But that means nothing. I read somewhere exhilaration is the feeling you get when you chance upon a great idea. It starts there. 
until immediately you discover what's wrong with it. <laughs> you think, oh, oh, wow, this, but hang on a minute, did I think of this? Immediately that moment, that feeling dies down. So those who claim that somehow um, Satori, as it's called in Zen, that I had an instant realization. If, if you feel that you had an instant realization and, and that was that, that's only 1% of the journey. Because now the real challenge starts how you imbibe that and how you adopt it and how you really incorporate it and drop your imperious tendencies and, and that bring those values, those virtues in you and actually put yourself through those tests day in, day out, day in, day out. So, ultimately, it's all the same. But each mantra, each sound arrangement carries a different um, sentiment, different energy for the consciousness. It's like this. You can listen to any number of songs. All the love songs basically say the same thing. I love you, you love me, or you betrayed me, I didn't betray you. <laughs> or I always loved you, but I'm sorry, I couldn't tell you. I don't know why you loved somebody else. <laughs> is, there, is there anything else? No, really, all love songs will say, look, such and such thing reminds me of you. Night reminds me, rain reminds me of you, and so on. Or I'm still trying hard to forget you, <laughs> whatever. But why, even after like, ever since music was created, why now even a new love song that may say the same things but with slightly different lyrics will evoke different emotions in you and you would want to hear it again and again and again. Until such time a new one comes along and you get bored of the previous one. <laughs> why? Because that's the way human nature works. So to keep that newness, to keep that joy alive in your sadhana, sometimes it helps to undertake a 